find the holes before you get there and make sure you have a backup plan for a backup plan. <laughs> Planning and attention to detail before, during, and after, it truly goes a long way. <music> Welcome back to Quick Fire Marketing. I'm your host, E.T. Mack. have another very special guest with us today, Danielle Winters, marketing expert. I'll let her introduce herself. Danielle? Hi there. I'm Danielle Winters. I've got a history in the event marketing, field marketing space, and happy to be here talking with you today, E.T. So we're going full in on a trade show season here. <clears throat> so companies always want to know, how do I determine what's an event worth attending, exhibiting, or hosting? Like, how do I figure this out? What are some some key thoughts and ideas there? So I think that the, the first step really is to do your research on what event you're looking at, what's the target audience, what's kind of like the breakdown of the different titles, levels of interest, what kind of field it is. Various trade shows are meant for different industries or interests. So doing your research is very important ahead of time. And I also would recommend if you ever have the ability to go to a trade show as an attendee and kind of explore it and feel it out before you make that big investment with, with your company, because these trade shows are very pricey. There's ways of reducing costs associated with it. However, there's a lot of costs that you can't get out of. So make sure it's, it's going to be a good fit for, for your company. Something I've always wondered is kind of going on with our, our other question as well. Of like, how do you determine an event's worth it? Do you, how do you come up with the goals for an event? Cause every event's kind of different and unique, right? There's some are much bigger than others. Some are much smaller regional. Is there like a percentage you walk into with every event? Like we want to capture 10% of everything. Are there numbers that people should kind of wrap their mind around if they've never done an event? Yeah, I would say it's really important not to just measure ROI, but also ROO, so return on objective. So I think it's really important oh. to go into any of these kind of trade shows, not just expecting the ROI, but your ROO could be simply brand awareness, just generating excitement over a new product launch or trying to get some media exposure, networking. Networking is huge. So there's a lot of things that you can do in preparation for these kinds of events. I wouldn't necessarily say that ROI is the end all be all. I really do think that it's important to know those kind of objectives in advance. And then and then once post event comes around, have a debrief with your team and kind of get everybody's input. Was it a good show? Were the interactions what we were expecting? Were the leads the number that we wanted coming out of the event with? You're going right into where I was going to, you know, ask you the next question and it's I've seen you at events, you're, you're flying all over the place, having a lot of conversations. There's a lot of things you have to, in front of you, like directly you have to keep in mind, but a lot of things in the back of your head, you have to stay on top of as well. What are some small things that people forget about at events? Are there other things, you know, outside of, you know, knowing where your competitors are, other, other little things to be aware of? Yes, I, I would say find the holes before you get there and make sure you have a backup plan for a backup plan. <laughs> Planning and attention to detail before, during, and after, it truly goes a long way. And I would say, especially any of these larger trade shows, the price tag is ridiculous, but go for the dedicated Wi-Fi or try and do hardwired. I recommend it, especially if you have a demo that you can't kind of pre-record something for and it has to be a live demo go hardwire <laughs> you'll thank <Yeah>. yourself later. <laughs> if i'm making a checklist of my roi and roo what are some of the top things i want to bring up because there's almost to a point where you could bring up too many priorities so what should we really focus on that transfers across any vertical any company like anyone just trying to do an event i would say certainly brand awareness Brand awareness, being able to just utilize PR. If, if you have a PR team, certainly lean on them to help with engagement. And then I would say simply just being able to network goes a, quite a long way as well, you know, and just having those conversations with the people that are coming by. Is there a good piece of swag? I know this might get us in trouble, but I always wonder that. 
Oh man, some people are just, they really love their swag. Like is a t-shirt better than, I don't know, like a fidget spinner or a pen or like mints? I don't know. Like what would you do? Lip balm, surprisingly. What? What? Really? Lip, yes. And especially if you go to the trade shows where it's dry. So Las Vegas for a great example. People that are not from Las Vegas or that area always talk uh-huh. about how dry and how they need chapstick. I can't tell you how many times people were like, oh my God, chapstick. <laughs> so at the end of the day, the main sticking point with events is it always comes down to cost. Like how much money am I spending? I'm going to throw out a couple of phrases to you, that, like things you can do at an event. Let me know if you rank it as like a uh, nice to have or need to have. Okay. Yeah. All right. Demo station. Need to have. Okay. In between the demo stations, they usually have like a large screen where someone can do a presentation. Nice to have or need to have? I would say nice to have. All right. Food at the booth. Cookies, coffee. It's a nice to have. Definitely wouldn't consider it a need to have. And here's one I I find real interesting. After parties. Is it worth the investment? I do think that they're worth it, especially when it's over the course of a couple of days. People are traveling from all sorts of places. So they're looking for things to do. Um, So it gives you the opportunity to network beyond the booth. So it's a good tactic. Do Do you think the strategy of booking maybe a restaurant or a hotel space across the street from the event venue, is that a good idea or no? Yeah, absolutely. The spaces that are outside of the exhibit center are generally less expensive than the meeting spaces in the venue itself. Do the same conversations happen then? Like, you know, you're planning ahead, you're planning your ROI. If you're not inside the venue, it's called kind of a more wild, wild west situation, right? So how do you ensure success if maybe you don't have the resources to spend to get in a booth? Or if you do, the location they want to put you is like all the way in the back with like a five foot booth next to a bathroom that no one cares about. Like, So you can get a restaurant across the street or up the street, not too far away. How do you ensure that that location will be a success? I would say utilize that space and book meetings in advance. Make sure you get your meetings pre-scheduled and you already have an agenda. I would say a month, month and a half at a minimum to try and get those spaces filled. So for aspiring event people, or maybe some teams that they're wearing multiple hats and event wasn't one of their original hats, you covered a little bit about it, like double check, triple check, poke holes and everything, but what else? I would say making sure that you're communicating and you're providing yourself buffers and communicating deadlines with reminders is so important. (laughs) Yeah, and I think you're really good at this as well, but when multiple things go wrong, Or maybe like other people are just, the energy is not good in the group for any number of things. Maybe Wi-Fi is down, people's flights are late, et cetera. How do you turn it around? Because you're the event person at the end of the day, right? Smiling and just having a positive attitude goes a long way. I might be freaking out on the inside, but I'm not going to do it without having a smile on my face. Yeah, (laughs) and I witnessed that you're like super proactive. You're all over everywhere. Like you're not waiting for people to come to you with problems. You're almost like, hey, it looks like your energy is just, a little low, like what can I do to pick it up? Yeah, right. totally the water boy of the trade shows too. I make sure that everybody is well hydrated. (laughs) 100%, yeah. (laughs) Well, Danielle, it was great having you on. Guys, you can find us wherever podcasts are found. Danielle will have her information on LinkedIn. Danielle, any any final words? Thanks for having me. (laughs) So Danielle, I noticed your last name is Winters and most events are during the summer. What are your thoughts on that? I despise winter. So I, I really enjoy the, the summer events. <laughs> I'm all about it. <laughs>